नमस्ते नमस्ते So today, Guru Purnima, so we'll just talk a little bit on that. Guru Purnima, the, the significance of the moon and the term Guru, all that we have in the previous Guru Purnimas talked at length. So today we can look at what is the reason that we are gathered here for in the sense of what gets us to respect and give our um, honor to these great teachers. Because there are teachers in every field. So that, that we have to know. Guru in the Indian um, tradition, Guru is not a teacher. So it's a, it's a bit different. So we are looking at certain directions where the teachings take you and that decides whether that person is a guru or not to you. So there can't be one person who's like a guru. It depends on what this teachings of this particular person does to you internally. So we have to consider why we have to pay respect to these teachers. So Different fields of knowledge are there, different exercise systems are there. So if yoga is an exercise system, there are other exercise systems too. Then we should uh, bring all their names also into this particular respect tradition. So the understanding is, if you had a stirring inside you at some point of time, that you are not limited to the name, race, uh, citizenship kind of identity and that you are part of this mystery of the universe and you don't feel it that way but you know that you are not. You were born into a family and they give you a name, whatever race, whatever religion, whatever citizenship, nationality, all comes with it. It's just super, it's just imposed on you. And we just go with that. But sometimes in some people, a stirring occurs that that is not the end of you. You are part of this mystery of the universe. And then you want to feel that connection. And that comes through a state of consciousness. But how do we get to that state of consciousness? Because the current state is so entangled with the name and the form and all such identities. So then there comes the teachings which guide you towards that state which expand your sense of identity uh, more than a name, form, race kind of identity that you are part of this great universe, you're one with it, from an experienced point of view. So, it is that kind of teacher and that kind of teachings which is rare and difficult uh, because it's a state change we are looking at. They are not just teaching you some skills to, um, to do something or to lose weight or something. It is a big change of state, it's an insight, it's a wisdom. And that changes, it transforms the sense of self. To that uh, is the respect. Okay. So today we will take up one of the original texts of Hatha Yoga, Hatha Yoga Pradipika. So Hatha Yoga, we have a few texts. Hatha Yoga Pradipika is there, Shiva Samhita is there, Garanda Samhita is there. Out of this, the oldest is Hatha Yoga Pradipika. So we will. Um, in honor of the teacher who gave us that teachings, we will chant some of the selected verses and uh, we will briefly discuss the meaning. So we'll take one Om first to start off.
So release your hands if you need to look at the phone to follow the chant. Uh, we have sent you the So if you are in that uh, Manasa WhatsApp group, it is sent to you. High tech class, all with their phones. Let's begin. You know, like today is like switch on the phone and then we begin. <laughs> okay, so Sri Adinadaya, Namostu, Tasmai, Yena, Upadishta, Hatha Yoga Vidya. Viprajate Praunnata Raja Yogam Aroda Micha Adirohiniva So that is the very first line of Hatha Yoga Pradipika. So it starts by saying that let there be an offering of respect. So, Nama Astu, meaning let there be a Namaha, let there be a reverence. Two, Adinada. Okay, so that is Adinada meaning, Adi means the first, the first teacher. It is the first teacher of Hatha Yoga. So, that is something um, certain schools have taken this Adinada to be a a real personality who lived um, somewhere in the midst of time, who descended onto Himalayas and taught a group of students and it passed on. But that, that has no evidence based on the text or anything. So that, that is individual um, interpretations. So for us, Adinada represents um, we go more in line with Padanjali's teachings, where Padanjali is talking about this original teacher as Hiranyagarbha, as, as a, a wisdom in the universe. So we are all manifestations of the universe, and the universe stirs each one of us at some point of time, hey, don't forget, you are me. And that that stirring which is there in the universe, I put it as the Adinada. Okay, so that is that, that initial stirring which causes us to search, whereby we are so smug in different identities and all that, but somewhere we feel a uh, lack of completion. We, we, there is something more than just this name form. And that is coming from within, for some of us. But for some of us, it might not be a stirring from within, as in um, a restlessness creeping in you as to my true essence. You know, sometimes we are not disturbed in that way, but it's a teacher or it's a teaching. You come across to a class, you're going f with the exercise idea, and then something the teacher keeps saying stirs you. You start to get a bit released of the shackles of just the shape sense of self, and you start to get a bit um, curious about this formless, spacious wisdom and energy that you are, then that teacher is your Adinada. Okay, so we don't have to look somewhere and create an imaginary um, kind of personality. The Adinada, if you can think back to the first stirring in you, uh, something about state, something about sensing yourself as a field of energy, as a field of space, then that moment, that space, if there is a personality, that personality, or if it's a book, all that comprise the Adinada for you, okay? So, um, I'll leave you for a minute to just silently contemplate on that moment. So, for example, for me, my earliest memory 
of this kind of yoga is I'm a child sitting in a bus with my parents and just going from village to village and I'm just looking at the changing scenes and somewhere I'm thinking that all this village, all these strange people I'm seeing, all of them are thinking with I. So everybody is thinking I, 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 I. And somewhere I got a feeling that there can be only one I. And I, I won't be a baby because I've just been introduced to algebra because I started to create a mathematical equation. So there we just learned that if, if it's like 1x plus 2x plus 3x plus 4x, then take x out, there's only 1x, put the rest all in a bracket, there's only one. So in my mind I'm solving this. So there is only one I and inside this there are all these manifestations, but there's only one eye reflecting. So it was like a big solution for me. But whatever caused that stream of thoughts, for me that is Adinada. Uh, in my remembered way, that is Adinada. Then that got shaped up by reading Vivekananda, reading um, different great teachers' books. It continued to give more shape and direction. So. For me, like it's all those people are this Adinada context. So take a moment to close eyes, to sit, to close, and to just contemplate. If you can recall any any time, any incident, any teaching, any any place. Sometimes you're watching a scenery, and then suddenly it strikes you that you're part of this magnificence that the universe is. In your mind now you can just contemplate on the meaning of this first verse. So you're offering your respect to this teacher or teachings or that moment of time, moment in time where you had a stirring. And uh, then particularly the tech to the techniques taught by a teacher. And here we consider this initial um, practitioners in whom this stirring was happening and then they explored various techniques by which they could make this connection real uh, in an experienced way. So that represents that initial group of teachers. And then we offer our respect to them because if you are a person who has an itcha for arudam, arudam meaning to climb up, so we are at this shape identity state. From there to this infinite universe, to experience that as our essence, that's a huge shift of state. That looks so high for us right now. And when you are in consideration of that, how do I go from feeling as this limited, miserable individual to this limitless, grand, magnificent limitlessness that is so high and as you're looking at it, suddenly you see a shining stairway forming right in front of you. So that is the term for adhirohini. So it's like a shining stairway. So this Hatha Vidya serves as a shining stairway for whoever is having the intention to scale the various states of consciousness. It vibrajade, it shines. And to those people who set this path for us, who set this stairway for us, our most humble respects, namostu tasmaye. So you can slowly open eyes. So now this second line, Waiting for the phones to. Okay, fine. So, pranamya 
श्री गुरु नाथम स्वामेना योगी ना so there sometimes my auto spell it made it yogini but it is actually yogena me yo va yo g e n a and uh, kevalam raja yoga ya hatha vidya upadishyate so now uh, this teacher swatnarama is showing us the method to start the practice whether it's you're going to start the practice or whether you're going to teach a class they are laying the sequence of it so first swatmarama before he gives the instructions on hatha vidya he pranamya adi gurum nadam he first offers his respect to the teachers before him so he's not teaching from a place of arrogance okay i'm going to teach uh, what i know um, or what i gathered my knowledge i'm going to share with you instead he's saying this knowledge has been coming down through a lineage of teachers so first i offer my respect to the known and the unknown teachers so that, that is the pranamya sri gurum nadam and then he says okay why is he offering this hatha yoga vidya he's offering it it for kevalam raja yoga yeah only kevalam meaning only only for raja yoga it is only for that reason that this hatha vidya is being taught okay so so that's something for us to consider right before teaching be in that respectful um, gratitude filled heart to your teachers um, and to that source which gave you this knowledge to share okay so the next one brandya bahumatatvande um raja yogam ajanatam hada pradipikam datte swatmaramaha kripakaraha so now he's saying he is giving this hatha vidya purely for raja yoga okay uh, will he will he will explain what he means by raja yoga now he says that in those days this is so many hundreds or thousands of years back but he is saying too many funny ideas abound bahumadatvante so many bahumada many mada means brain so many ideas people everybody is acting like an expert and giving their opinions and uh, that leads to brand brand means you go crazy okay meaning in that confused state so craziness is when you are delusional so delusion in yoga is we think i know yoga but what we mean is i know yoga is a stretching system like any other existing exercise system that is brand okay so he clearly says this is for a state shift this is not about shape creation it is not about trimming your shape into a shapelier shape that all will come but it is about raja yoga so because of this so many ideas so many workshops so many youtube channels so many things we go everywhere and the the teaching first is you have to first connect to a base you have to put in the effort to develop clarity under that teaching or under the teacher for which you need to have that satkara that that receptive attitude you have to go long term then you have a dridha bhumi you 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 get it then by all means you don't have to stay stuck with a particular teacher or teaching or anything you can explore but that base will serve you you know what it is about and you are seeking out different ways for your shringara for your entertainment and enjoyment but if you're simply not really firm in receiving anything from anyone and simply go places 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 that is what is called bahumadatvante there is plenty if you want like that variety there is plenty even in those days and that will lead you to brand
okay, a delusion, and uh, and 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 uh, this teacher is saying that I offer you Hatha Yoga Pradipika, and if you stay with this, you will gain clarity. Okay. So the next verse, Hatha Vidyam he. Matsyendra Gorakshadya Vijanade Swatmarama Atava Yogi Jani Tat Prasadataha So now he's again connecting back to that respect mode. So even when he is about to teach, he's so full of gratefulness that he received this much teachings. He got all this to share and he's so grateful. And he mentions the name Matsyendra. So if you remember that story of the boy in the fishing village getting mystified by this ocean, not being carried away by the fishes and other treasures coming out of the ocean, but he wants to connect to the ocean itself to understand the wisdom and being carried by the whale to the cave and all that. So that is the first teacher being mentioned here. So this context of Adinada, as far as I know, there is no clear personality. It is just that initial stirring in us which guides us. But in terms of a clear name and personality, Matsyendranath. Okay, so that he is like one of the first known teachers who taught this Hadavidya. And um, uh, so that is like, uh, and after that he taught the first cowboy, Goraksha, meaning the cow, the boy with the cow, he taught to that. And by their grace, Swatmarama says, I got to know this Hadavidya, which I am going to share. Okay, so there's always that, that heart of gratefulness and humility with which they, they share. So, there is nothing uh, more to that verse. So now we can look at the next verse. Ashesha tapataptanam samashraya mato hataha ashesha yoga yuktanam adara Tamato Hataha. This is a beautiful verse. So right now he's coming to the point as to, okay, what can you get from this practice? Okay, the state shift is great, he already said, but now he's coming down to a level which might interest you. Okay, so initially, not everybody is so thrilled by the possibility of feeling that oneness with the universe. Okay, so they have other immediate concerns. So many people come to yoga like a, a stress therapy. Like I am, I'm in all kinds of uh, anxiety, I'm in so much of suffering, or I'm suffering from a backache, suffering and pain. That is one big impetus where people will say, I think you have to relax a bit, go to yoga. I have a backache, I think you do yoga. That kind of people. So Swatmarama is saying, that's fine. You don't have to be the one coming with the stirring to connect with the universe. You can come from Tapa Taptana. You're fully immersed. Ashesha meaning completely in Tapa. Tapa means tormenting heat. Your emotions and your body, everything, whatever you think of, it increases an inner heat. And you're being burned by that. Tapa taptanam. You're affected by all these afflictions completely. Ashesha tapa taptanam. And then you go to a yoga class, to a yoga studio in our times. Then what Hatha will do for you is, it will serve as a hermitage which will shield you from the scorching heat. So that is the meaning of samashraya mato hataha. Matam meaning a hermitage. Some ashraya. You're going there like, oh, this yoga class is, I hope something good for me happens there. And you're going with that kind of thing, and this won't disappoint you. It will serve, at least in that time, it becomes like a hermitage. It will shield you from all these anxieties and all that. You will let go. You'll feel cooled, quenched. Okay, so that is the first line. 
And that is what as teachers um, and as students we, we share and we experience that to people who are in need of that, who are coming to yoga, not to feel that oneness, to just to get released and Hatha Yoga won't disappoint you. Now the second one is saying, Ashesha Yoga Yuktanam. So you are not coming for just getting a release from your um, pain in the mind. You are really completely interested in yoga. You are immersed in it. You are like so interested in the teachings. Okay, so you are coming to yoga more than just a release, relief, um, entertainment or anything. If you are coming like that, then Hatha Yoga will serve as a base, adharam. It will become your support like the tortoise. Kamato Hataha. Kamatam means a tortoise. So here there is a mythological story why they brought the tortoise here. The story is that once the earth started to lose its invisible base and it started to, it was almost wobbling and going to plunge into the infinite depths of the universe. It was going to lose its footing. At that time, the intelligence of the universe takes the form of this gigantic but invisible tortoise and comes under the earth and holds the earth. It won't let the earth plunge. It will hold it and will say, okay, I am supporting you. You keep spinning and revolving, I will support you. Okay, you go about your business. That way, Hadavidya will serve. So it will not let us drown. So just because we are immersed in yoga doesn't mean we won't act funny, we won't get um, worrying thoughts, but if you don't forget the teachings, it will take the form of the tortoise and support you, won't let you drown. That is beautiful. Okay. So now we go on to, this is all the first chapter verses, we go to the last chapter which is Samadhi. So what you have to understand is all this talk about Hatha Yoga being physical and all that. Hatha Yoga got four chapters, like Yoga Sutra got four chapters. Hatha Yoga Samadhi chapter got around 135 verses, whereas Padanjali Samadhi Pada got 51 verses. So the, the, the focus on that Samadhi for that, that concentration and absorption inside is equally in Hatha Yoga, where he clearly says that this this is being taught not for just physical health, but Kevalam Raja Yogaya. Now he is going to explain what he meant by Raja Yoga. So he says, Brahma Grandair, Bhavet Bedo, Hyanandam, Shunya Sambhavaha, Vijitra Kanako, Dehe, Anahada, Shruyate Dvenihi. So now he comes on to say that Brahma Grandhi. So there are four stages in Hatha Yoga. The first stage is called Aramba Avastha, the, the beginning stage. The second stage is called Gata Avastha, where you are an intermediate beginner. Then you are Parijaya Avastha, you are in that senior intermediate level, very seasoned. And then you have Nishpatti Avastha, where you are consummating, where you are in the higher rungs of wisdom. So this Hatha Yoga starts when you get a breakage of Brahma Granthi. Granthi means blockage. So here what you have to understand is in Tantra, in this yogic understanding, your mind and ability to feel and respond is not limited to the head. So from the Western point of view, the brain is the part which does the conscious listening and brain is the part which initiates the responses. But in yoga, the context of chakras is that you are thinking listening, feeling, responding all over the body, not just the brain. Brain is where you make a conscious sense of it, but unknown to you, this body, the entire body is a listening consciousness, is an is a acting consciousness. So we, we have the chakras, we are not getting into that. Each chakra is put a, symbolically a male figure who is the listening part of that area. 
the contemplating part. And then it has a female counterpart who stands for the acting part. So you have the pelvis, you have all these chakra places, you're, you're listening, that part is listening. Now if you get into uh, faulty thinking, you start to identify yourself only with the shape and limitations and all of that. At the base, your adhara, at the base, at the muladhara, blocks form. At the level of your capacity to think, capacity to understand, capacity to act, everything gets blocked up. That is Brahma Granthi. Okay? That gets broken. And that for us it will be broken through various hip opening practices. But you have to remember that just hip flexibility doesn't equate to Brahma Granthi opening. Because that is related to blockages in your thinking, blockages in your ability to receive. It is referring to that. So if you teach a class giving hip opening, along with that you're passing some teaching, some vidya, it is hatha vidya, okay? You're passing some teachings by which the students are opening here at the same time they're receiving these teachings, they are being introduced to another layer of reality of them, that they are not just a shape and all that, something happens. Then a Brahma Granthi happens, Vedanam happens, it gets broken up. Then what happens is, you will start to perceive a sense of vibration. Um, universe is vibration and that vibration flows through you. And you start to sense your body as vibrations. And you start to sense a sound. So in the early days, when I started to get this feeling, so I am sitting close to eyes and I am starting to hear this kind of sound. I thought it's my friends who have come on their bikes and waiting outside my house. So I'll, my sitting finished, I get up and go out and I find that no bikes. Again come back and sit, the bike is back. Again go and come back. Finally at some point of time I understood that there is no bike. This is coming from within. So then I check the text. The text doesn't talk about bikes, but they talk about humming bees. Okay, so that is the sound when the Brahma Granthi starts to get released. You start to hear this, some kind of kind of sound. Okay, so you start to connect to it. And that attracts the mind to be more attentive. In Hatha Yoga Vidya, this is where you can call yourself a beginner. Okay, so through your practices you sense it. Before that, the moment philosophy comes, you sleep. Because it does, you can't relate to it. Uh, because these are all what, like that kind of thing. But through practice, at some point of time, you get it. Then you awaken so, so excitedly inside. That is the beginning stage. Okay? Mm, let's just check for 30 seconds. Guru Bhunima, special day. So you can keep the block um, on your hands if you want to, on your thighs if you want to. Close the ears with the thumb. Uh, blocks are meant for uh, vertical to support the elbows if you want to. But we are not doing a long sit, it's just one minute, you might not need the block. This is meant to practice for one hour plus for you to listen, get the sound. But now we are just checking. So I go silent, you listen inward. Especially around the pelvic space and simply listen. Sometimes it's not so much a sound, but a sense of movement, a sense of tingly kind of thing. Really feel what you're not only hearing, but feeling. And then slowly release the hands. So I'm not asking you whether you heard it or not. If you sense something, it's great. Otherwise, we are all in that path, okay? So generally what happens is when this sound is heard, along with that, here anandam, a joy starts to rise from shunya, from 
nothingness, you start to feel these waves and waves of bliss. So, uh, that is the beginning stage. So that's, you all are feeling that. Okay, you might not have this huge kind of bliss, but when you come to practice, with the philosophy you're practicing, somewhere you are feeling that bliss. And that's why you return. Okay, so once mind feels the bliss, uh, whether you make conscious sense of it or not, it will keep going back. It likes bliss. So if you're returning, you're coming back again and again, um, and you come, even if you know that it's mainly philosophy, mainly lecture, that means somewhere you are sensing that bliss. Okay? So, Aramba Avastha. Then, the second stage. You can look into the phone if you want to. Dvitiyam Gadi Kritva What is after that? Ah, Vayur Bhavati Madhyagam Let me, let me just think of it. Dutiyam uh, uh, What is again? Okay, let me just close eyes for a moment. And Dutiyam Okay, this listening to the inner sound, what makes happen is we lose a little bit of that, uh, yeah, so that's good. So, Dhrita Asane, okay, so that's what that line is. Dhrita Asane Bhaved Yogi. Um, after that, what is this, Sandhya? Ajani Deva Samastada. So, the second stage is, Dhritiya meaning the second stage, is when you are moving into like a strong vessel, where your energies are starting to get um, accumulated within you, your energy body becomes strong. So your Ida, the Pingala, it's all not always scattering out, it's all just moving towards the middle and all of that makes you like a baked vessel. You're not just just loose clay or sand, it's all getting, get, uh, getting kind of collected, your attention is getting collected, is taking form in, internally. Then your Prana starts to connect to the middle. So generally our energy is lost through the Ida or the Pingala. So you're lost in uh, time or space, you're lost in this or that. This you start to connect to the middle. And as you connect to the middle, and then you're, you become more firm in your yoga practices. Dridasana yogi. In the practices you're more firm. Your attention gets really collected in. You're not so distracted by the shape memories or other people. You're collected so much inside, then you start to shine as a deva. Deva means of the nature of luminescence. Divu, that, that same term is in Deepavali, that the Dvi word is light. You become like a Deva, you become a body of light. So as the energy starts to collect to the middle, you start to experience yourself as a light, as a luminescence, as an incandescence. So that is the meaning, that's the second stage. Um, and here too they will go on to explain, um, you will start to sense um, Vishnu Grandi, that's the next block at the heart space. So at the heart space, normally our heart is clenched around some personal considerations and just our closed family or race or we are, our heart is just for that. But it all breaks open. We feel that I am light and so are you. So a beautiful kind of Mahamaha kind of feeling happens, okay? That's light, I am light. That kind of feeling happens. Then that breaks. Your heart tingles in joy, in love, okay? So that starts to happen. So the third stage, the, the chant is a little bit complex, you know, the, the third the, the verse. So we are directly going into the fourth one. Um, Sandhya, keep looking, I might need your help. So, um, Rudra Grandi, Yada Bhitva, Sharva Pita Gado Nilaha, Sharva Pita Gado Nilaha,
निष्पत्थ वैणव शब्द क्वनावीना क्वनो भवेद So here is the last stage. Okay. So here, Rudra Granthi is broken. Rudra Granthi is the breakage of the blockages in your skull space. So we are really shaped along the fasci the fascial kind of networking, the way our endocrine glands are firing, what hormones are released. So that all was covered by the earlier uh, breakages of condition patterns. We broke it. Then at the brain, how we can put it is like, like really entrapping neural circuits. We, we are trapped in certain circuits. They fire and we can't help it. We just act accordingly. And we have been always feeding amygdala, that stress response part. They always come into the fore. So that all gets released. It all gets broken up. So our brain is now getting transformed. Okay, beautiful areas are now getting empowered and they start to give you so much of wisdom, so much of insights. And along with that, your perception of universe as a sound and you as a sound switches to like a flute. So it's like a flute sound you will hear. Or they say it's like kwana, kwano, it's like tingling. Um, so if a bell is like how do you, uh, if a bell is struck, the, the resonant sound after that, the remnants of that, mm, that sound, that kind of sound you will start to hear. Okay, so that uh, I have an experience, that kind of beautiful flute or the remnants of that, that fading kind of uh, uh, struck gong. So that's what they say. And this stage where he goes on to explain that Eki Bhutam Tadachittam Raja Yogam Abhidhanagam. So then you are so immersed with that sense of oneness that you are with this universe. Your shape is actually space and your space is being shared with this universal space. And this universal space is full of energy and wisdom and so is this space. You feel that continuum. And uh, at that time, you hear this sound, and this state is called Raja Yoga. Okay? So sometimes there's this confusion that generally people refer Raja Yoga as Padanjali's Yoga. So even some very great luminaries made this um, misunderstood remark that Hatha Yoga is like a stairway to climb somehow up to reading Padanjali's Yoga Sutras. Okay? So that way a gross misrepresentation has been done. But it is not so. Hatha Yoga is for Raja Yoga, says the author of Hatha Yoga itself, Swatmarama, but then we have to listen to him in, as to what is Raja Yoga according to him. He says it's this great state of consciousness. And then he says, don't worry if you don't get that kind of state. He says, um, he says, uh, Astuva Mastuva, meaning whether Astuva Mastuva Siddhir, Oh, sorry, mukti. Mukti means liberation. You get so liberated from your individual sense of limited self and you're so much with that infinite formlessness. But whether you get that, astu, meaning you got it, astu siddhi, va, ma astu, you, you didn't get it. Whether you got it or not, akantida sukham, labhyam, you will connect to beautiful pleasantness. Okay, that will be available for you. That pleasantness will be there for you. Whether you're fully liberated or not, through this practice, you, through that wisdom, you will have an ease in your consciousness. Okay? So, that's all. So, we end up with a closing chant. We'll take one Om. And then, uh, so you can do lead and follow. So, I will chant the Om and then you chant the Om. Om.
Asadoma Sadagamaya Tamasoma Jodurgamaya Mrityorma Amrdam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 So the meaning of that chant is, may we be led from ignorance to reality, may we be led from darkness to light, may we be led from shape and position identification, where we are always worrying of its uh, end, we are always in insecurity, instead may we connect to that everlasting essence within us whereby we connect to that sense of continuity, not afraid of discontinuity. May the teachings shine bright. Our respects to all the teachers, the teachings. Release.